That's true. Naked Palpatine. Um. <laughs> oh, oh, you think that one? Fresh out of the clone tank, nude Palpatine is my That's well, the first thing I think of when you say Dark Empire Palpatine. Everybody, I need a weapon. <laughs> Welcome. Even though this is a bit sooner than I do with most of my rereads, I'm rereading Halo Cryptum by Greg Bear, which is the first book in the Forerunner trilogy and is the earliest novel set in the Halo timeline. Um, I reviewed this like a year or two ago, and I just reviewed the entire trilogy in one sitting. But this time around, I'm trying to do it properly, so uh, while this is a reread, I'm just going to count it as a review, because I'm reviewing just this book. Um, I appreciate this book a lot more the second time through than I did the first time. A lot of things went over my head the first time. Um, like I said, this is, this is a, a very dense book. This is very sci-fi, which I guess is funny to say, because, I mean, Halo's sci-fi, but, like, it's still, like... A video game franchise, right? It's still like the fun, the, the action, the shooting, the da da. da I don't know. Th this just this is a different breed. Okay, this 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 feels like like some heavy sci-fi with some deep lore building, and um, it, it feels more of a plot first, character second. There is some good character moments, especially from the didact uh, and born stellar makes eternal lasting but outside of that i don't feel characterization is super strong in this book what this book excel excels in is the plot and the world building so without spoilers i don't really have too many spoilers i guess um i will say before i officially start talking about the the book itself um i would recommend before you read this book um you can look them up on YouTube, or you can just wait to play them when you get to Halo 4, but the first four Halo terminals in Halo 4 um, that show the past, like with the Didact and the Librarian, that actually happens long before the events of Halo Cryptum. So to actually watch those four videos before reading Halo Cryptum, um, especially just so like you have an idea of what the Didact sounds like and the Librarian sounds like, so I think it's a good idea to watch those first. Also, in Halo Evolutions, we have a short story called Soma the Painter, and we don't have an author for this. It's, it's kind of weird. Like I, I looked around, there, there doesn't seem to be an author for this story. I mean, obviously there is, but there, there's nobody claiming to be the writer of it, so I don't know. It's a very simple story, though. There is this luxury resort planet that very wealthy forerunners go to when they're like getting older and they just want to live the rest of their life in peace it's this like ultimate vacation spot and it's this interesting like um paintbrush that's also like te technological and so like she's painting this forerunner but it can also like it also like auto paints certain stuff that's that she's viewing it's it's weird but basically the whole thing is she finishes her painting she's like this is a great painting i did a great job and as she's looking at her painting, she noticed something different that she didn't remember seeing when she was painting, but is on the, the, the painting, which is this little gray streak coming from the sky. And that's kind of it. It's very eerie. It's very ominous. It's not much, but it is a little foreboding. Uh, and that's because it is, in fact, the Flood. They have arrived on this planet, and they're going to presumably kill everybody on it. We don't know what that's all about, because they're not around. It is a little bit weird, because this takes place before Cryptum, and the end of the story, the authorities say to contact the Didact, which, how are you going to do that if he's in a Cryptum right now? So that's a little weird. But outside of that, pretty decent little story. But Halo Cryptum. <sighs> so, <sighs> our main character is Born Stellar. Also, shorter for that is Born, but most people call him Born Stellar, or he can go by his full name. Born Stellar makes eternal lasting. He is a young forerunner who is on a mission to find treasure and artifacts because he doesn't want to deal with the responsibility. 
and he goes to Urt Tyrin, which is just Earth, and gets the help of two humans. It's a little bit weird here. We have Chakas, who's a typical human as you would expect a human to look like. Uh, and then we have Riser, or Morning Riser. He has a longer name than that, but I'm not going to say it here, but it's very long. Um, read the book if you don't know his full name. But Riser, Morning Riser, whatever you want to call him, uh, is this weird kind of like hobbit sort of human. Like it's a human, but he's like, I mean, I guess there's short people here, but there, there's more than just being short. There's some big distinctions from human. So um, it's a slightly different offshoot. So I like to think of it as like the hobbits of Halo, I guess. They, they won't exist after this trilogy, but he does exist in the story. Um, and they come upon a cryptum. The cryptum contains the didact, the main villain of Halo 4. Of course, he's not super crazy in this story. So what happens? We'll have to read the trilogy to find out. But Bornsteller, Riser, Chakas, uh, and the didact go uh, on a journey together. And that ultimately leads to um, Bornsteller going to the Forerunner um, main capital, um, where they're having some political disagreements and problems, uh, and then all hell breaks loose due to mendicant bias in AI. And something about a precursor. What's all that about? You have to read the book to find out, but I'll say this was an excellent start to this trilogy. It's really weird. Don't know exactly how to explain it completely, but that's the gist of the story without getting into the nitty-gritty, uh, spoiler-wise. But it is very well written. Vastly more intriguing and interesting than Greg Bear's Star Wars book, Rogue Planet. Um, and, you know, and this is a lot for me to say because I'm not really, I'm a character person more than I am a big, heavy plot person. But this still held my interest pretty much all the way through. Um, so, and it, you know, especially if you feel like the main plot of Halo 4 is rather weak, this makes that significantly better so i do recommend this uh, especially if you're trying to go in chronological order it's an it's a good place to start it's a little confusing it's a little out there but if you stick with it you can have a really good time um up next i do not have halo primordium but that is something i plan on reading sooner than later um but actually i'm gonna be reading the first book in dune not the whole novel but the first book the first section in that book because it's the first half of the movie that that's out and then the second half of the movie that will be coming out will be the second half of the book. So I'm going to do it that way to kind of make that fit. But we'll come back to Halo Primordium some other time. I'm getting to some spoilers. If you don't want any spoilers, tell me to get out of here. So, Forerunner armor is really interesting where it could like sustain your health and it's part of what keeps Forerunners living so long and you can feed you, nourish you. The Ancillas are what are AIs uh, in, the, in this back then. We get a mention of the Librarian who imprinted humans with sort of commands deep within their genes. It, it, again, it's, it's really weird, hard sci-fi stuff, but it's interesting nonetheless. Um, and this is 10,000 years after the, the cutscenes, the four terminals from Halo 4. And we also get a little bit of the, 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 the system of, of importance within the Forerunner hierarchy. We get um, builders are at the top. Then we have the miners, the life shapers, and the warriors at the bottom. Um, the mantle. This is something that's really harped on in Halo 4 and something we'll get further development here. But the mantle of responsibility is this thing given to the Forerunners from these ancient beings known as the Precursors. Um, and it's basically just, they are responsible for protecting the galaxy, protecting all life, da 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 And, you know, Born Stellar, along with a couple other people in this book, kind of critique the Forerunners a bit because they value builders who build inanimate things above life shapers. And they did fight in a big war with humans and, you know, subjugated them. So are they living up to the mantle? Which is kind of a very big, important theme for this trilogy. Um, um, 
Bornsteller is about 1,200 years old, whereas his parents are around 6,000, so that's crazy. Um, Tarom Hakor, which is uh, the former human Sanchayum Empire. Now, the Sanchayum the San uh, in the mainline games are the big, long neck guys, the prophets. But they didn't always look like that. Apparently, they used to be extremely sexy and sensual, which is crazy. They also, when the humans were fighting the Forerunners, joined and made an alliance with the humans and were fighting the Forerunners. When it seemed like the Forerunners were going to win, the Sanchayum decided, hey, let's cut a deal with the Forerunners. We don't want to get killed. So they got a less harsh punishment than the, the humans did who fought to last breath. We also learn that the Didact was a father, and that all of his children died during the war against the humans. We also get this very important plot that that will be important heavily in the next book, which is the mysterious prisoner. There was a, a prisoner, some ancient thing, that the humans and the Sanchayum kept locked up, but has now escaped. We don't know what that is. We don't know what it wants. All we know is that despite their agree their disagreements, everybody was in agreement that that thing needed to be locked up. So it is a giant spooky mystery going on with this character. Mutation. This is where the book also continues to get a little confusing, a little weird. So Bornsteller is a young human. Sorry, a young forerunner in this book. And the, the forerunners go through different mutations, like they kind of evolve and grow in different stages of, of their life. Um, kind of like Pokemon, I guess, or something. Um, but the Didact needs assistance now. He knows that the end is coming and he wants to prevent that. So he needs a more mature Bornsteller. He needs someone who's actually going to be able to help him more than, than Bornsteller can. So Bornsteller takes on these, these, you know, forced, not forced because he had to be willing, but these artificial mutations that give him the memories, the physique, the build of the didact. So I'm just going to tell you now, the first book doesn't use these terms. The second and third book, I think, do, and especially the third book. But basically, Bornsteller makes eternal lasting, is Bornsteller, but he's also the didact. Now, how does that make sense? Well, we have the didact who we meet at the beginning of this book. He is the your didact, the original didact. And then we have, at, by the end of this book and the rest of the books coming after this, we have the isodidact, which is born stellar with all of the didact's memories. Is that clear enough for you? Okay, so that's what we got going on here. Um, uh, we have Faber, who's a master builder. We actually saw him, I think, in the first or second terminal entry in Halo 4. Um, but he's the one that's um, orchestrating building all these um, rings. And uh, Bornsteller's dad is helping uh, him do this. There's 12 Halos, but one of them is missing. Um, and yeah, so that's a big deal. It's, it's interesting, like I said, it's not a very character-heavy story. It's very plot, plot, plot. Um, but we do get to see a little bit of the difference from... It, it does feel like this kind of like grand odyssey, you know, even though it's a pretty short story in the grand scheme. But, you know, because we began the story of a born stellar looking for adventure and came with all this responsibility and changing into something else entirely, something not even really born stellar anymore. In fact, his parents even comment on this, how... He's not really their kid anymore. Like, he's just so different, um, which is interesting. And this is another uh, really uh, fascinating part of the book where we learn about the mysterious ancient ship that came into the world and had some weird cargo of powder and vials and stuff. And so they tested it on animals. They, they figured out it was safe and actually made their animals, like, prettier and stuff. So the San Shayum especially started breeding their feru with it and, and they're having them eat it and stuff. 
uh, which, you know, were basically just like their dogs. And, you know, that was fine for like years and years and years. Like going on 20 to 30, 40 to 50 years of nothing. Just like this, this is just dog food now. This is just, just what this is. But then mutations started happening. Changes started occurring. And then... And uh, the humans were doing the same thing. Some of the humans were even eating it. It was like a delicacy. Uh, and then infection, the flood began. I don't even know if this is exactly true. This is what people are asserting, speculating perhaps. But it's fascinating to think about because it literally says it comes from another galaxy. And it is like this ancient ship, even more ancient than the Forerunners. So maybe even the Precursors. So where did this come from? I don't think anywhere in the Halo universe we still really have an explanation for that. Just one day the ship came into the stars with these vials of powder and people were stupid and started eating it and stuff and now we got the flood. We have Mendicant Bias, who we finally get introduced to, which is this AI that was meant to be in charge of all the Halo rings that the your didact helped... Uh, create or at least was in control of and Mendicant Bias is acting extremely weird what's that all about again we won't find out till later but uh, it was really a good part of the book and Born Stellar slash Isodidact however you want to refer to him now um, I had to be at court with all these you know uh, forerunners when all hell kind of breaks loose um, and we end with a little quote that the Eurodidact heard um, when he had, in the past, talked to this precursor. And it was very chilling and ominous. And what's that all about? Again, can't really get into that without getting into Primordium and Salentium, which we'll get to eventually. But overall, it was a really fun package. Um, it's it's going to make you think a lot. You're going to maybe have to reread some pages, but it is a... Once you get through Supernatural Encounters and Silmarillion... You know, you can get through anything. So going through this a second time through was not as difficult. Um, and it's a fascinating and interesting read, especially if you're into Halo. But even if you're not, I think this is a... Actually, I mean, it, it, it's not going to show you the vibe of the games at all. But if you want to just read an interesting sci-fi novel, this is actually... It's pretty, it's pretty good, even if you don't really care about Halo. So overall, big thumbs up for me. I know Marcel, my friend Marcel... And Liam will eventually be talking about these books on like a live stream or something. I don't know if I'll join them or anything for that. I might upload these before they do this or after, I don't know. But uh, definitely be sure to subscribe to Marcel and Sea Spider. I'll leave a link in the description to their channels. So you can be prepared for when they talk about that sometime. Which will be fascinating to hear their perspective on this book. Until then, guys. Uh, uh, before you leave me. Make sure to never make a girl promise that you can't keep. Till next time.